Hello, everyone. This is Akata Vesta. Thank you for coming back. And today, I would like to talk about retrograde seasons as a whole. Since Saturn in Pisces that started the, this retrograde movement in June 29 in Pisces, followed by Neptune. And after that, we have Chiron in Aries, also retrograde. And in August, we have Mercury. In September, we have both Uranus and Pluto retrograde. After that, we will also have Jupiter in Gemini and Mars in Leo. All these retrograde movement will bring us right until the end of the year. The exact date of the retrograde, I will leave it in the description box below and um, so you can check on it and have a look at your own chart. Each of these planets, where are they sitting in your natal chart and also in your transiting chart. If you would like a consultation with me, um, follow my website, Becoming a Lotus Doctor. And apart from describing each planet of their retrograde uh, movement, how this energy will influence us, today I would really like to bring it as a whole. Since we started 2024, with Pluto leading the, 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 the setting of the energy in, in January, that it moved from Capricorn ingress into Aquarius. And now he is going back to Capricorn one last time from September to November. And and I think also the timing is very interesting. We are during the American election period, September to November. It's going to be quite turbulent. And with this retrograde, I think it is like um, a wake up call for us to evaluate how we have always considered the old establishment. Is there something we should change? We've this last retrograde, should we go back to look at how in American history, modern history with political situations, in the last 15 years, with Pluto in Capricorn, how our life, your life, since I am not an American citizen, has been really influenced by the establishment, by the controlling power, by, in a certain extent, to a great extent, also of propaganda, of uh, information that should not, should not be hidden. And, and I think that is giving us a chance. So with Pluto at the beginning of the year, leading the, the this this energy of change of shift moving into um, aquarius on the 14th of january i think and after seeing there in in eight months almost eight months he's going back one last time before coming back to aquarius in november and stay there for the next 19 years and so with him leading the way 
in the in the first part of 2024, we have all these forward movement following Buddha. There was no retrograde until, unless, um, except a very short period of Mercury. And every um, planet, they were in that forward movement. And somehow during March, April, May, we were feeling this acceleration of pace that, uh, like, I think we, we were feeling that time passed so fast. We are already in the second half of the year. And after all this forward movement, and we have also experienced the concentration of stalliums, first in areas, and then from areas move to epic um, um, Taurus. Now they are spreading out from with Chiron and the North Node still in areas with Mars and Uranus in Taurus, Jupiter in Gemini and Venus and Mercury is already moving towards Cancer, Leo. And so, instead of the concentration, like the beginning of the year, only in just a few zodiac sign, now may, we might feel a little bit more expanded. The fact was, since it was so quick, so concentrated, that's why we were feeling all this acceleration, the concentration of energy, the bursting of of of, of creativities in a way that that the, the the healing process with Chiron playing very important role in areas together with the North. And now. In the second half of the year and we will have one after the others going retrograde already started with that already started with neptune a few days later with neptune and we will go through all these movements together with iron mercury uranus and Mars until the end of the year. As in a bigger picture, if we observe this chart from a higher plane, I think it is an invitation for us after all this acceleration movement now is a moment for us to go back to go within with introspection to see the kind of progress especially regarding also our spiritual advancement with Neptune, that he is at 29th degree. It's in retrograde and retrograde. In this um, energetic, such an important influence. And he is coming back. It's like saying, okay, after all that we have done, while swimming in this ocean, deepening, deepening our understanding of our spirituality, now is a period for, for us to 
it. To really think of what we have achieved or what we have missed. And we've sat in on the same side. In Pisces, that Saturn is giving us this this backdrop of being concrete, down to earth, not so much like Neptune in Pisces, that drifting here and there, but more polite. And later on, with Karen, Karen has been in areas since the last four years, and and since last year in July, when North Node moved into areas, they were interchanging, touching at least three or four times. And each time, ignite more digging even deeper into our healing journey. And now he's going right to Greek one more time. Mm. Another invitation for us to look back, to really look deep. The kind of healing progress that we have done. A way to consolidate. The progress that we have achieved. And maybe there is still some area we thought that we have dealt with, but it's still there lingering in the background. So in this retrograde period, really like it's still don't move so fast yet. And especially now that Chiron is in areas that want to move so fast. But the energy is telling us, don't move so far. When we keep on rolling and rolling and rolling, we sometimes lost our direction, our purpose. And we thought we have done this and this and that while moving so fast. We, we may have missed something. And to look back, go back in time to look at our memories in the last few years. With Pluto, as I said before, in the last 15 years in Capricorn, Saturn and Chiron, that they are both Saturn in, in, in Isis and in, in Chiron in areas that they have been there for three or four years. And during this time, how much we have changed, how much we have moved. Together with Neptune, instead of drifting in infinite movement before he goes into areas. Come back, recollect, see where we have been. It's a time of 
invitation really for us to go into this meditative self-centering grounding collecting and also to recharge our energies As we know, in 2025, we are going into a very different energies. We can feel this. We know something has shifted, but we can't quite touch it yet with Neptune. We are feeling it. Before it really came out and came out forward, we recollect and re recharge our energy so we can, we are able in 2025 to receive it. To move along with it together with Pluto in November when he go back for one la for long time in Aquarius the next 19 years that's when the ball really start rolling And not only put Neptune, you move to Aries, Uranus, you move to Gemini. Mm. All these outer planets that they influence from such a far away high plane. Every movement they made is a generation process. It's a long process for us to integrate and move and transcend. And we cannot do it without really integrating oh. the kind of healing or understanding we have acquired in the last few years. So in these four or five months is a golden opportunity for us to put it with and maybe that is also a good period for us to have even more heightened connection with the divine when we can stay in that silence place in that goodness and up on the sky, in our galaxy, we are in this period that I want to bring in the constellation Hydra. Why is that? Because this constellation, with his head, that constellation is so wide, and with with the serpent head touching and and the tails, 
moving across the cos our, our galaxy and the tails touching Libra. That is one of the biggest constellations in, in our system. And what Hydra represents is, is so interesting. The serpent, in this case, as, as a feminine, the water serpent, and together with her brother, Draco, the dragon's head, masculine energy. The story, the story, the mythology goes that Hercules, after he killed this serpent head, he would dip his um, arrows into the poisonous serpent blood, and he becomes a whole lot more powerful with his arrows. And by the way, these arrows, one of his arrows has um, hit on Chiron. That's how Chiron become the wounded healer for being the teacher of Hercules. It was an incident, okay? We leave it like that. But the fact was, this serpent was considered so powerful, and Zeus sent Hercules to kill it. Very much, in a way, similar to the story of Abu, which I talked about just before, with um, the story of um, the, the podcast of Lilith. Regardless of the mythology, what this constellation Hydra Hydra, the serpent. When a ship a serpent spread her skin. She came out as a new identity. But this shedding period is a kind of stillness. One just doesn't change from identity, from the old. Move on very quickly, shedding the skin and then came out. There needs to be a period of integration for this change happen for this shift of consciousness to happen and if we connect this serpent to the cosmic eggs when the cosmic eggs around the eggs we have the serpents around it Another very potent in biology. Even the X itself, there is this period of students. Inside this X, we have this animal, we have this fetus developing with his or her own pace on speed, staying with him, adjusting his energy before it cracks and come out to become a new life form. And this energy of 
inside you. Also connect with Mary Magdalene with her ex. And we will have on the 22nd of July and Mary Magdalene Day. Connecting it with Hydra. The Divine Feminine. At this moment, within all this retrograde energy, she is recollecting herself, the Divine Feminine in every one of us, both man and woman. And I invite everyone of us to go with to connect with our innermost self. Appreciate to acknowledge of the progress that we have done so far. Maybe it is a very painful process. One more reason for us to sit still, to give compassion, This divine love, this unconditional love to ourselves. And it is the overall energies that I would like to share with you. Stillness of it. Do not get distracted by what is happening outside of us, of the political issue, of the social issues everything that is fear mongering that try to draw us back into that old paradigm of this old energy of fear and we can only stay above and and distance by Really going within, knowing our true self, just like Lilith in Libra, to reclaim that self sovereignty. We are reclaiming our self sovereignty also now through this hydro. Cosmic Serpent. As I said before, maybe this period you will feel the connection, the channeling with the Divine even more heightened. Just remember, this Cosmic Serpent also represents the Kundalini energy, the liberation from our sake.
our true connection with the divine. If you would like to discuss your natal chart, transit, or galactic astrology chart, please visit my website, becomingbuddhist.org. Thank you. From my heart to yours, Akata Western.